St. Anna's worship experience. Now here are your announcements for the coming week. These are your announcements for the coming week. No Sunday fun day today. No Sunday fun day today. Virtual Bible study this Tuesday at 7 p.m. The Reverend Vanessa Brown is teaching a dynamic series on the cross. To join in, dial our conference line at 386-243-3122. Choir rehearsal will be this Wednesday at 6 p.m. BTU this Thursday will also be at 6 p.m. Please note the special start time, 6 p.m. BTU this Thursday at 6 p.m. This Thursday at 7 p.m. we will have our Monday Thursday service, a service in which we will commemorate what Jesus did on the Thursday before his sacrifice on the cross on Friday, in which he shared communion with his disciples, the new Passover, for he will be and he was our Passover. And the lesson be taught on humility by washing the feet of the disciples this Thursday at 7 p.m. Communion and foot washing service. This Friday, March the 29th, we will have a virtual only Good Friday service featuring the seven last words of Jesus on the cross, featuring all women preachers, a sister's perspective, if you please. The virtual only service will broadcast across all of our platforms, Facebook Live, St. Anna's YouTube channel, and our church webpage at 12 noon and again at 7 p.m. on this Friday. Virtual only Good Friday service uh, this coming Friday. Virtual only broadcast this Friday, 12 noon and again at 7 p.m. Saturday, March the 30th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, uh, St. Anne's will be heading to our Union Number 5 meeting hosted by the Mount Vernon Primitive Baptist Church in Tampa, Florida. Service will be held at the Mount Olive AME Church, 1902 LaSalle Street, Tampa. Transportation will be provided. Also on Saturday, March the 30th, from 12 noon to 3 p.m., we will host once again our annual Easter Egg Extravaganza. Bring your kids out for a time of fun and fellowship. Sunday, March the 31st, next Sunday will be Easter Sunday. We will have only one service, one service only, next Sunday at 11 a.m. There are several ways to give here at St. Annas. You can drop your tithes and the offerings in the wicker baskets at any time during the service. In addition, you can give electronically via the Givelify app. Look for the St. Annas icon, or you can give via the St. Annas webpage. Our webpage address is St. Annas. PBC.net. That's S T A N N I S P B C dot net. Just look for the green donate button on the home page. St. Anna's honors our very own second quarter honor roll and academic achievement students. We salute and congratulate Desaria Lane, Naya Alexander, RJ Alexander, Robert A. Ridgely III, Mia Boatwright, Jeremy Boatwright, Celia Simpson. Salay Simpson, Chastity Brown, Shalia Patrick, and Terrence Neal. Congratulations to Raji and Cynthia Huff as they celebrate their 46th wedding anniversary on the 25th of this month. For those celebrating birthdays in March, we say... Happy birthday to
take a ride with us down memory lane as we look back at a St. Anna's Golden Moment from March the 26th, 1989, Easter Sunday morning. Be blessed and enjoy. There we go. All right. All right. So we're going to line free grace and worship. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear relieve. How precious did that grace appear! The hour I first believed. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. like me
I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was lost, but now I'm was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. Twas grace that taught my In grace my fears relieved and grace How precious did that grace appear gracious father we come here this morning telling you thank you lord thank you for waking us up this morning when you didn't have to lord thank you for the blood that runs warm in our veins father god thank you for waking us up in our right mind this morning father god you could have went anywhere else but you stopped by here lord and woke us on up this morning lord you started us on our way the Lord is blessing me right now. Father God, we come here in your holy name telling you thank you. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for everywhere that you've been. Thank you for all the things that you're going to do in our lives, Lord. We give up our lives to you, Lord, so you can use it for your glory. Father God, we come here and bend down for you to have mercy on us, Father God, so that you can continue to bless our lives, Lord. Bless our minds, Lord. Wash our hearts, Lord. Wash our mouths with your blood, Lord. Take us and make us whole, oh, Father God. We come here and say thank you this morning, Father God, for everything that you've done, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. to say listen to this yeah I went to the water the water was cold 
It chilled my body, but not my soul. And you know, Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, when you know the Oh, hallelujah. Listen to this. One of these days, it won't be long. You look for me, oh, and I'll be gone. And you know the storm is. Oh, when you know the. Oh, when you know the storm. When you look back over your life, you know passing over, Oh, 
want me What you want me to be Oh, mold me What you want me to be Then mold me What you want me to be Then mold me What you want me to be What you want me to be Where you want me to go What you want me to do what you want me to do? Want me to do. You say yeah. yeah. Yes, do you wait on? Yes, say yeah. yeah. Yes, do you wait? Yes, do you wait? Say yes, do you wait? Yes, do you wait? Say yes every day. Yes, every day. Say yes, I'll obey. Say yes, do you wait? Yes, Walk in you, you say yeah. yeah. Every day, yes, every day. Say yes, shall obey. Yes, obey. Say yes to your way. Yes, to your way. God prepared to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Amen. Amen. I'm having a good old-fashioned time this morning. I don't know about you. I thank God for the ministry that has gone forth by the choir, by Washington and Howard. Amen. It's like a law firm. Amen. Amen. We just thank God for that. If you can't feel what we've done so far this morning, you can do a wellness check. Amen. I, woo, amen. Just a couple of things we want to announce, and then we have a baby that we want to christen this morning. Uh, amen. Amen. This Thursday, this, th well, let me go, this Thursday, DTU will start at 6. Not 6.30, we know, we'll start at 6, end at 7, because at 7, we're going to go into our communion and foot washing service here. Amen. Amen. It's good primitive Baptist. We're going to at least do it on Monday, Thursday. Amen. 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 So... We're still going to be cautious in how we do it. Um, we're going to ask that you think now whose feet you want to wash. Amen. Hopefully somebody within your family. Amen. Amen. Boyfriend, girlfriend, that's fine with me. I hope you trust them. Amen. Amen. Husband, wife, however you want your child. Um, I was sharing with Deacon Kazmiski. We're going to line, uh, do it a little differently. We're going to line those. Uh, pitchers and basins out for you to come, choose, go, do what it is, and learn the lesson of humility, and then bring it back for the next person. Amen? Amen. That's this Thursday at 7 p.m. We will have our foot washing and communion service. Friday, we will not have an in-person Good Friday service. I'm not sure I did a good job in making that clear. Friday's Good Friday service will be virtual. means that you'll watch it online. Uh, we have seven women preachers. All but one, or all but two are Primitive Baptists. Amen. Amen. All but two are Primitive Baptist preachers, and one of the two came through here. Amen. Amen. So we will have those seven women preachers who will, uh, we're putting together the production now, uh, thank the women, those who, the preachers who have come. Thank the choir who came out yesterday who, who laid two wonderful songs yesterday. So we're going to put it all together. It should be a really nice program. So this Friday at 12 noon, the broadcast will air, and then we'll rebroadcast it at 7 that evening. But once it posts at 7, you can watch it as much as you want. And it'll be available on all of our platforms, our Facebook page, um, our YouTube channel, our web church web page, uh, everything. Only thing it won't be on will be on dial pad. That's the only thing it will not be on. Other than that, you will be able to do that. So this Friday, virtual only Good Friday service featuring the seven last words of Jesus on the cross. Uh, it's going to be a great, great service. You will enjoy it, but it's virtual only. Also, I want to just emphasize again on Saturday. 
I know a few of us. I'm going to take just a handful of us. We're going to go down to Tampa because we're going to support the Mount Vernon Primitive Baptist Church as they host Union Number no. 5. Now, I'll be honest. I, I was hoping they would have postponed that, but it is what it is. So a handful of us are going to go, just a handful, to support uh, Elder Alonzo Gamble and the church in Tampa. He's, he's one of our oldest elders who's always coming wherever we have. He's always there. So we're going to um, make sure we bless them. But while that's going on, while a few of us will go down there, I expect the, everybody else to come out with their kids. Amen. Amen. For our annual Easter egg extravaganza. Amen. 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 So I'll make sure I'm clear about that because I know there's some confusion. Yes, we're going to take a handful of us, and I say a handful. We'll go down to Tampa. While we're doing the Tampa thing, we're looking for the rest of y'all. Come on out. 12 to 3 on Saturday for our annual Easter egg extravaganza. I also got this this morning, too, so I might as well put it out there. I know there's going to be the third annual Dr. Joyce M. Cusack Easter Egg Hunting Festival also on Saturday from 12 to 4. But most kids in here got parents or guardians who drive. So what y'all kids should say, Mommy, Daddy, uh, take me here first. Amen. Amen. To get the candy you want and, uh, and then come on over here. Oh, come on now. Amen. I assume Wilbur's going to do the same thing. Amen. I, I see he's, already, he's already talking to his mother already about that. But that's what I expect that we can do. So I want to support, support the third annual Dr. Joyce M. Cusack Easter Egg Hunt. I don't want to think that we're not supportive, but I think we can do both. And I don't think the kids will mind doing both. Amen? Amen. They won't. Amen. <laughs> I'm sure they won't. And then on Easter Sunday, we will not have sunrise service this year. We will have one service, 11 a.m., uh, Sunday, March the 31st, at, on next Sunday, for our Easter service. I want to get those out the way and make sure I was clear on that. Everybody squared away on that? Perfect. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I did not know that. Amen. Amen. We'll sing it next week for you, Mother. All right. Amen. So we're excited. Amen. Of all the birthdays um, for the month of March. I got to ask a question. Someone can help me. I know our mentor normally gets that. I didn't know in the clip today, we're looking at a service that was on Easter Sunday, 1989. It's my oldest Easter Sunday clip that I could come up with, but there's some faces I don't know. And I know the clip is not artistically the best, but when you're looking to see mama or daddy there, <laughs> it looked fine. It looked fine. So I know some of my colleagues out there say, you couldn't put a better clip on than that. Well, it may not be good for you, but it was good for us. I wonder who the lady was in the blue that starred the songs, the mother. I don't know who it was. Somebody. That's who that was? Best, best, amen. Oh, Miss Diane's mama, okay. Amen, amen. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Amen. I know, I know. So next week you're going to see another clip that's similar to that, probably the next two weeks, where the clip is not perfect. It's not centered the way we would normally do it. But you get glimpses of people who have long gone on. Amen. So we can see and enjoy that. Amen. So for the next two weeks, don't think that I'm just pulling out bad clips, but I'm looking to get us a chance to see some of those. When they celebrated Easter back in 1989, I've talked a lot this morning. I got a baby to, to christen this morning. Vesta, I know you're here. Come on up, Vesta. I know your daddy here, Sebastian. I know your mama here, Nisha. Why don't y'all come on up? And little sister is here, amen. The whole family is here. Amen. Why don't you come down front?
got that of walking the baby around from the pastor that ordained me and licensed me when I first started preaching at the Beulah Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Moses L. Jackson, Jr. And he always made a point to grab the baby, pray, anoint, and walk her around the church. I used to think that was something silly back then. But it's a privilege now. Lord have mercy. Come on, choir. Oh, oh, amen. I believe it's prayer time. Amen. Won't you stand? Amen. Amen. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity of just coming boldly to your throne of grace where we can come open and honest, no shame, no holding our head down unless we're respectful. But God, we thank you right now that we can come boldly right now. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what we know, no matter what people hear, God, we thank you right now we can come boldly to your throne of grace. No matter how we may messed up last week, last night, doesn't matter, God, we thank you that right now, right now, oh God, we can come boldly to your throne of grace. And God, we don't have any magical or mystical powers, God, but we're so glad that we have confidence in you, God. Confidence that you hear our prayer. And God, you know we got confidence in your ability to do your ability to heal, your ability to deliver, your ability to set us free, God. Thank you, God. Your ability to give us direction, God. Your ability to give us on the, keep us on the right track, God. Thank you, God, that we have confidence in your ability to do all these things, God. And God, we come boldly asking this morning. You know our list, God, on our prayer list? You know the things that are on our hearts, Father God? God, we just Ask that you do the thing that we know you can do. And we give your name the glory and the honor in advance right now. That you're covering our children right now. That you're covering our children right now. That you're covering our children right now. In the name of Jesus. That as bleak as it looks in some circumstances, you got our finances covered, God. Ah, we won't be poor always, God. We won't. We, we, we know that we'll have one day, God, because your word declared that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings. You won't have room enough to receive. We also know that, you, God, that you'll bless caregivers this morning, those that care for somebody else, God, those who struggle caring for somebody else, an aunt, an uncle, a husband, a wife. Oh, God, we thank you right now that you cover the caregivers, God. I, I thank you right now, God. Thank you right now, God. And then God, finally, we pray and we thank you for keeping power right now, keeping us from danger seen and unseen. Oh, God, I just thank you right now, God. This is our prayer this morning, God. This is our altar prayer, God, right now. This is our prayer to you, God, knowing that you can and you will. We have no doubt in you. Your credit is good with us, God. And we thank you in advance, not only hearing, but answering our prayers. We count these things done right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen.
Amen. I done talked and sung a little bit too much this morning, Lord. But I want to say, he's on time. He's on time. He's on time. Oh, yeah. He's on time. He's on time. He's on time. Oh, yeah. Yes, he is. Oh, 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 he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him to. Be there right on time. On time, God. Yes, he is. Amen. 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 Before we start the service, I just want to recognize we had so many homegoing services yesterday. Part of that came through our church. We held the repast for Sister Betty Brown. Amen. Amen. That is the sister in law of our own very sister Vera Butler, um, her husband Charles' sister, uh, that I have some connection with because I used to work with her sister, the other sister, Carol and J.B. Howard. Amen. In Annapolis, I was the lobbyist, and she was the head of the Prince George's County delegation. And I can just say it's a small world. It's a small, small world. So we keep those families lifted up uh, in prayer. There is a word from the Lord. If you go with me to the book of Acts chapter 12, the book of Acts chapter 12. Amen. See up on the screen. Thank God for our studio. They do stuff behind the scenes, but I thank God for an awesome studio team. Amen. I, we thank God for them. The book of Acts chapter 12, not a long message. Probably will do part two of this in a very short version next Sunday, a very brief series. Um, but I was inspired. The, the Lord just had me listen carefully to what a couple of our young people said a couple of weeks ago. Amen. Amen. And so this is what has come out of that. Acts chapter 12 starting at verse number 9. And here, beginning the reading of God's Word, I'm going to read from the Living Bible, the Living Bible, the translation. So Peter left the cell, following the angel, but all the time he thought it was a dream or vision and didn't believe it was really happening. They passed the first and second cell blocks and came to the iron gate to the street. And this opened to them of its own accord so they passed through and walked along together for a block. And then the angel left him. Reverend Vanessa, Reverend Jack, that's a word right there all by itself there, but that's another story. Peter, <laughs> Peter finally realized what had happened. It's really true. He said to himself, the Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and what the Jews were hoping to do to me. After a little thought, he went to the home of Mary Mother John Mark, where many gathered for a prayer meeting. He knocked at the door in the gate. And a girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that she ran back inside to tell everyone that Peter was standing outside in the street. But here's my focus here. Verse 15, they didn't believe her. You're out of your mind, they said. When she insisted, they decided it must be his angel. They must have killed him. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. Whew. And when they finally went out and opened the door, their surprise knew no bounds. He motioned for them to quiet down and told them, I mean, they have to be quiet. He's an ex-offender now. I mean, he's He's an escapee. Told them what had happened and how the Lord brought him out of jail. Tell James and the others what happened, he said, and left for safer quarters. So far the text. Lord, grant us to the servant right now clarity in speech, precision in the expression. Lord, bend my will to conform to your will that your people be edified and blessed. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 
Verse 15 said, they didn't believe her. You're out of your mind, they said. Using as a subject this morning, just listen to me. Just listen to me. The story behind the text, it's around Easter time, like right now where we are in that season. The resurrection of Jesus is probably has been about 8 to 14 years, has already happened before. King Herod decides to execute James, the brother of Jesus, and the conservative religious community loved it. They, they got off on this. They thought that they had a true champion in lying, arrogant, egotistical, narcissistic King Trump. I mean, King <laughs> Herod. I'm sorry. I, I, the guys, I'm sorry. King Herod, Lord. Thinking here is a king that would help our conservative agenda. Thinking, they thought, here's a king that would stop the new church of Jesus replacing the old conservative Jewish church. Hmm, replacement theory. Thinking here is a king who doesn't respect women, don't respect his wife, don't respect his girlfriends, don't respect no women. I mean, the conservative religious community loved it. And when Herod executed James, the brother of Jesus, he saw how the community loved it. So he decided to double down on his lying, treacherous, unconstitutional ways and now arrest Peter, the de facto leader of the new Testament church and do the same thing to him they did with James. He himself thinking maybe this will solidify my base of support. Yes, I'm throwing a lot of buzzwords out this morning. Amen. Yes. Intentional. And help carry favor to keep me sitting on the throne. But being strategic with his evil self, he thought it better to execute Peter, let's wait till after Passover. Wait till after Easter. Because, well, you know it's a religious holiday. Even though he never celebrated Passover. And he didn't go to nobody's church. So Herod, concerned about how members of his new church, the leadership, seemed that when they got arrested, always miraculously escaped out of prison. He decided to put Peter in the most secure prison they had and had 16 brother Huff, 16 prison guards chained to him so he could not escape. He couldn't go to the bathroom without all 16 there hanging on to him. Lord have mercy, Lord Jesus. He could not escape. And the Bible says the church, the New Testament church of Jesus Christ went into prayer for God to spare Peter's life because it shook them that they lost James. That somehow God allowed James, the brother of Jesus, to be executed by this crazy leader, Herod. And now they are really on edge about losing potentially the leader of their church, Peter. So the church prayed to God so, they could, so that he could deliver Peter from out of their hands. The Bible says while the church was praying, the angel from God went into the prison where Peter was and freed him without the gods chained to him knowing about it. I, 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 don't, I don't know if the angel God knocked them out, caused them to go into a deep sleep, or what? I don't know what the angel did. All I know is that the angel went where no man said no one could go. And the angel did what they said no man could do. And that was bust Peter out of maximum security. Peter himself was shocked and thankful 
or how God used an angel to do what was deemed impossible. And so he gets out of there. When he gets out, he goes to Mary's house, John Mark's mama's house. And when he gets there, with no one looking for him just yet, ironically, no sirens going off, no police, no guard looking for him right now. He goes there and he knocks on the door of Mary's house. The Bible says a young servant girl named Rhoda, probably about 14 or 15 years old, answered the knock on the door and asked, who is it? Peter let her, let her know it was him. He obviously knew it was Rhoda, but more importantly, she knew it was him. This is Peter's voice. This is Peter right here. And recognizing Peter's voice, she got so excited that she ran back to the part of the house where the saints had been praying, but she forgot to open the door to let him in. My God. And yet, this has become problematic because officially now he is an escapee from prison. And if they ain't looking for him now, they're going to be looking for him real quick. So she went back, told the church leaders in the house, she told the deacons and the mothers, she told the trustees and the finance committee, she told all the adults in that room that had no leadership position that Peter is at the door knocking. She said it with excitement. She said it with enthusiasm. She said it with unbridled joy. The man, our leader that we all been praying for is at the front door knocking. But the Bible says not one of those leaders, not one of them folk praying, not one of them tongue-talking, devil-chasing, Bible-toting folk None of them folk believed her. As a matter of fact, the Bible says they shamed her, insulted her by calling her mad, crazy, out of her senses, out of her mind, yes, thinking what she said was absurd. Why, why, would, they, why would these good church folk do that? Maybe, you know, I, I, I get it, I get it. Maybe they thought, maybe that those, those good Christian folk, maybe they thought, well, she's young. And, and she don't know her left hand from the right hand. Lord have mercy. Maybe, maybe they thought, maybe they thought, she, she young. And you know, children should be best seen and not heard. My son knows that. I say that too much, Lord have mercy. Maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe they thought, well, she, she's a girl, a young woman, and we all know that women, no matter how young and old, ain't got nothing to say that's worth listening to. Oh, oh God, I'm just saying, I don't, maybe, maybe they remembered something Rhoda did as a youth, and they can't forget it, or get over it. Lord have mercy. Maybe, I, I, I know, I, maybe, maybe, I get it, I know, I know these good Christian people. Maybe because of what she did in her past, in their minds, disqualified her from anything holy or divine. And really, I mean, if God was going to do something miraculous, he would let us know first, for he lets them, her know first. I know, I got it, I got it. Some commentators said she was a servant. So maybe, maybe because she was a servant, well, you know, we, you don't listen to servants. What they know? Mm, maybe they, they didn't listen to her because they didn't like her enthusiasm or her excitement or, or her joy. You know how, folks, sometimes people don't like the fact that you're happy. Uh, I said it one more time. Sometimes people don't like you because you happy. Oh, God. Somebody, sometimes people just hate you because you at peace. Lord have mercy. Maybe this will, may, I, I, I know what it is. I know what happened. Maybe, just maybe, they didn't believe in what they were praying for. I mean, maybe they were just praying 
to be praying, uh -huh. but not really believing that God can deliver Peter from being chained to 16 different gods all at the same time. So maybe they didn't believe what they were praying for. Yeah. We don't know why they didn't listen to her, but that didn't stop her from telling it. Because she knew what she knew to be true. She was the first version of a shouting John. Hold my mule. I know what I know. I know what I feel. I know what I hear. You ain't got to like it. Oh, but I know it's true. Peter is at the door knocking. And listen closely. You can still hear him knocking. If you don't believe me, go check him out for yourself. Finally, they did. Saw it was Peter. And they let him in. The Bible said they all rejoiced. But they would have found out sooner if they had just listened to this young girl. I'm almost, I'm almost done. Really, I'm almost done. That, 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 I mean, that, if they had listened to her, they would have found out earlier that God had already answered their prayer. You just spent the last hour praying. God had already answered the prayer, and you ain't even know it. And when you were told it happened, you ain't believe it. Well, my brothers and sisters, they almost missed their blessing by not listening to this young girl. My brothers and sisters, for whatever reason, we struggle to listen to our young people. We find it difficult to listen to what our young people are saying to us and about us. We find it difficult when our young people tell us something about what is happening to them and happening to us. Or when they tell us what we are doing and what it is doing to them and us. We find it difficult to listen to them because we still believe children are seen and not heard. I got an eight-year-old that continues to tell me he don't believe that's true. Because if I see something and I know something, I'm going to say it. Just got to learn to say it respectfully. We find it difficult to listen because the reality is we'd have forgotten what it was like when we were young, how we acted when we were young. What we did, no, I know, I know most of y'all were wonderful chilling, never made a mistake, never got a whipping. I know that's not true, God, but I'm going to say it anyway. Y'all was, I'm here with the angels, children. Y'all were just what? The devil is a lie. Y'all were, y'all got to remember how y'all acted, what you said, what it feels like to be young. And to make matters worse, not only did you not listen to her, how the young folk, they used, they used, uh, 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 Tierra, I'm, I used the right word. That dissing still a good word? Dissing, if you diss somebody? Yeah, okay, all right. They dissed her for the educated mother. They, they were dismissing her. They were shaming her. They were insulting her. And they refused to listen to what she had said. But I just come this morning to say this. If we listen to our young people, it will do us good. Lord have mercy. If we listen to our young people, it will do us good. It will do our families good. It will do our church good. It will do all of us some good. If we don't listen to them, somebody else will get their ear, and they'll listen to them, but that will be the worst thing for them. All they ask is that we just hear them. All our children ask is that we just listen to them. Give them a place in which they can share with you. Give them an ear that they can open up their minds and hearts with you. Give them an opportunity in your church, including the great St. Anna's Primitive Baptist Church, to be an active part of what we do and not just shuffle them out here on third Sunday like a dog show and a pony show. Lord, it, it's got to be more to be in the church than just coming out on a third Sunday. Just 
listen to them. When they're happy, when they're excited, when they're sad, even when they don't know what to say, listen to them. Listen to them during your church conferences. Listen to them in your meetings. If we listen to them, it will help all of us. If we listen to them, we'll find the answer we've been praying for. They didn't listen to Rhoda. And they dismissed her. But they found out they were praying and wasting time. Because God already answered the prayer. All they had to do was just listen. Now let me say this, and I'm done. I, my mama here, my mama, 90 could turn 91 this year. My mama listened after she backhanded me. <laughs> she, she knows you're right. My mama got a heavy hand. She didn't play. And there's some things she didn't tolerate. No talking back. They're not cussed. I'm 67. I ain't never talked back to my mama, even to this day. Lord, have mercy. All right, right. I ain't going to do that. Right. But she always listened. Now, let me say something. I'm going to tell the story, Ma. I should have told you I was going to say the story. I'm done. I was, I think, about 12 years old. And I was running down from 718 Bartlett Avenue, where we lived in Baltimore. My son has heard this story. And I was running down the street recklessly like my son runs in the house recklessly sometimes and somehow I tripped and fell my son of course being the child that he is asked well, why were you running I was chasing a girl was it mommy <laughs> no oh I fell broke my right wrist Dislocated where you saw it literally dislocated. It was like an L shape. I get, I get up at first, I didn't feel anything, but I looked at my arm. I ran up the street. Faye, this is where I got it from, with my big mouth. Ma! I mean, they heard me for two blocks for sure. I'm hollering, and I run up the street and beeline to the house. I'm hot, ma! First thing, ma said, shut that noise up. <laughs> ma! I wouldn't shut. Mom got the broomstick. I said, shut that noise up. And then I held my hand up. I said, oh my God. She listened to me. Took me to John Hopkins Hospital. I made more noise at the hospital. And they tried to reset my arm and give me a needle. But at some point, you just want to listen. That's what our kids are asking us. They're challenging us with that. Am I right, Brenda? They're challenging us. They just want us to listen. And if we listen, we'll all be blessed. Just listen to me. And all God's people said, won't you stand? Amen. Part two of this is next Sunday for Easter. It'll be five minutes. But it was somebody else they listened to also. We're gonna, it was a woman. We're going to talk about her next week. Amen. Amen. For those that are here, matter of fact, I, I see a good friend of yours. Is that Fontaine? What's his name? Furman. Furman. Your God brother. I hope you've enjoyed the service today. Amen. Now, I'm looking back there. We'll look at the camera. I want to say I'm looking at you. I'm looking at the camera. So I had to say that. I can see oh I can see him. <laughs> but <laughs> y'all pray for the deacon, Lord. Pray for the deacon and train it. But for those who are watching this online, listen, we're just a for real church. We're not perfect. We got issues like any other church. But what you find is a bunch of people who love God and we love God's people. And so if that's you and you want to join up with this church, you can do a couple of things. You can join by a Christian experience letter by candy for baptism, all you have to do is make this sincere request to God and say, God, come into my life right now. This is my time to be here. This is my season to be here. This is my time to make a move. And being here is being with you. If that's you today, go ahead and make that prayer. 
And after you make that prayer, God has come into your life. And then he will direct you if you listen to him on where you should go. When you get there, talk to them about being baptized. And they'll take you in, they'll baptize you, and then you would have completed all the things that God will require of you. Do that, and you will be blessed beyond measure. And the place God sends you will be blessed. For those that are here, you know what we've been done, doing for the last couple of years. See me at the church, amen? If you want to join this church, you feel a leading to join this church. We had two people in the last week who did that. One we're going to baptize, other than the candidate for baptism, which we'll talk about next week. Amen? So see me after church. Amen? My knee is not as good as it used to be, so I can't run as fast. I walk a little slow now. So y'all can catch up with me, all right? See me after church. Amen. 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 Just listen to me. That means I carry you. Just listen to me, she's saying. That's what, that's what Sheila is saying. Shalea is saying. And that's what Olympsia is saying. Just listen to me. That's something Tierra has said for years. Just listen to me. I see it a little differently than you all see it. That's what Desire is saying. I know RJ saying it. Lord have mercy. I know, I know, LaShawn, I know, I get it. But just listen. Just listen. And you'll be better for it. And we all be better for it. I don't want to produce any more thugs. There are thugs being produced in the church. I don't want no more stick up boys or girls. Come on, just listen to them watch God do some work. Amen? Amen. I know I'm, I'm talking too much. Lord, have Lord. mercy. Lord, this thing's in my belly. Just listen to me. Amen. Don't forget Thursday, foot washing, Bible, uh, foot washing and uh, communion. Don't forget Tuesday, Reverend Jackie and Reverend Vanessa is doing an awesome job teaching on the, at the cross. I mean, Amen. phenomenal job, the cross. And so continue that this Tuesday. Amen. Just phenomenal job. I'm done. I'm sorry. Ah. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and to be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us all and give us peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Doxology. Doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures in the birthday this month, there's a bag for you. Hey.